Amen. Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahusha by Hashem, Rechakodash, giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom and salutation to all you sincere Akim across the four winds, pushing this truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, because I'm a guy from a DC camp. Coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahusha by Hashem, Rechakodash, the feet of the elect. All right, now in this lesson, it's going to be a quick one going into uh, this particular character. Of course, he's kind of, uh, unfortunately for him, <clears throat> you know, he basically started barking up the wrong tree. All right, this dude, as you know, you know, uh, you may know him as Anton Daniels. Uh, he's kind of part of uh, this black, um, you know, manosphere, uh, male improvement uh, movement, you know, that's going on right now. It's kind of like an anti, you know, feminist movement. Of men basically uh, rebelling against, you know, <clears throat> feminism and all this other shit. And, you know, he's always about black, so-called black empowerment and, ba you know, s selling out to the system, you know, to uh, achieve success, so-called success. So, of course, he had, um, you know, I guess he had a run-in with uh, the brothers in, um, in Detroit and, you know, <clears throat> the spirit of Satan that, that got on him to basically get him marked. All right. And at this point... You know, because I was listening to the uh, Apostle Gabar, <clears throat> you know, double honors to the Apostle. Apostle Gabar was going in. And um, yeah, man, this guy, the scripture speaks about every idle word that's used against, you know, that, that's used against us will be used in the day of judgment. So when you saying the things that you're saying without doing your, your due diligence, right? Because he appears a lot of times because I watch some of his content, you know, and he appears a lot of a lot of times to be just. Uh, a step up above monkey level. What do I mean by monkey level? <clears throat> Basically, two thirds out of the nation of Israel, so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Um, the majority, uh, basically, they kind of, you know, they they basically destined to be destroyed. And even in the midst, they, you know, there's kind of levels of how wicked they are. So you got the grimy nigga in the street. You know, he's kind of like lower level monkey level, right? And then you have uh, the Uncle Tom. You know, the the guy who basically says, nah, we got to basically go into the system and, and um, be one with Esau financially, mentally and all that. So we can, um, you know, spread the riches. So that's kind of like the higher intellectual, the intellectual uh, ape, basically. But they all, you know, they all on some monkey shit, to be honest, you know, because they're still going off. The Lord is not dealing with uh, two thirds, you know, and instead of staying in his lane, right, this nigga is trying to flex. This nigga trying to flex. Every time I see him, I always picture this, right? Because he's always been one of those upper crust Negroes, you know, uh, <clears throat> upper, what's that? I probably said up, upper middle class uh, Negroes that, you know, just tries to, you know, talks about his money, his personality, his, you know, his achievement. It's all financial, all right? And, and trying to uh, spread that mentality amongst Israel. Now, the nation of Israel, you know, uh, Yasha Allah, Prince of the Power. Our power source, our riches, right, is in the kingdom of heaven. It's something that, you know, it, it deals with the spirit. Our riches is in the spirit, and, and it's, it has to do with faith. When the brother in Detroit basically told him, hey, you ain't going to make it, he didn't even understand what the brother was, was, was talking about. Because if he knew that the United States was slated, according to the Bible, that it was prophesied, and it's in the book, that the United States, a.k.a. the virgin daughter of Babylon, will be destroyed by thermal nuclear missiles. If he knew that, that the land that he stands on, the Detroit, because he loves Detroit. He's from Detroit, born and raised. So he loves Detroit, right? He's always talking about uh, fantasies of bringing Detroit back to the map. Detroit, the city of De Detroit, Michigan, is going to be destroyed by thermal nuclear missiles. All right. And if he happens to be in that land, because you never know when you're going to end up when all hell breaks loose. But if he happens to be in that land, he's going to be destroyed right along with Detroit. All right. That's going to be his destiny. But again, he's just going out there acting the ape, acting a monkey, trying to flex on brothers about some some FRN notes. All right. And what he doesn't understand is that, like the scripture said in Revelation uh, 3 17, he is naked, man. He is poor spiritually and he's naked. All right. Why? Well, I mean, he doesn't have his garment. He doesn't have his nationality. He doesn't have his clothes on, his spiritual clothes on. All right. He's just a dancing monk, a dancing monkey with money. When it comes to these Edomites, right, so-called white people, how they see him. 
you know, and, and it's, it's a sad case, but you start, you know, barking up the wrong tree, you know, because at the end of the day, we living in the end times, all right? We living in the end times, and a lot of a lot of Jakes are going to have their opportunity and chance to run into this gospel, all right? Because the, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to basically extinguish a lot, of, a, a lot of souls. A lot of you Israelites, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Natives, a lot of your souls and spirits are going to get ex extinguished, and you're going to be called back into the spirit. All right. When the brother told him, "Well, you ain't gonna make it," he was like, "I ain't gonna make it to heaven." No, you are gonna make it to 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 the to, to the um, um, the fourth dimension, that heaven, the spiritual heaven. You are gonna make it there. All right, you're gonna make it there, right, right, in a, in, in in a gruesome gruesome way, man. You're gonna go out bad, unless by any chance, you know, you some way somehow the most I have mercy on you and you repent and you happen to be a part of elect. But I just don't see it. You know, because he's gone in his riches. You know, he's he doesn't need, nor is he looking for a kingdom, right? Because he already has his kingdom. He already has his riches, all right? He has his, his, his car, his house, his monogamous, you know, his monogamous marriage. So in his mind, he's really rich. He doesn't even understand that he's nothing but an eight with a social security and a birth certificate and some FRN notes, you know? It's sad, man. This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 23. In the KJV, it says, Thy princes, right? Going back to the princes. Prince Israel, Hebrew, Yasha Allah, prince of, he, prince of the power. Thy princes are rebellious and companion of thieves. Thieves. Who are the thieves? John 10, 10. The thief cometh, but what? But for steal, kill. All right? That's talking about Edom Esau. Ultimately, it's talking about Edom Esau, the so-called white man. He is the biggest thief, the biggest vagabond, the biggest thief. All right. It says your thy, thy princes, meaning Israelites, are rebellious against the word and against the prophets. Uh, their companion, meaning what they want to break bread. The word companion goes back to company. Come means with, panty means bread. So they want to break bread with thieves. That's why he talked about when, the, you know, he said a brother asked him, who are you? Which come to find out that wasn't the truth. He said, I'm rich. Well, what riches is the bread of Esau? Those FRN notes that you have is the bread of Esau. It says, everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards, carnal rewards. They judge not the fatherless. Meaning he's not doing anything to help the fathers. He'll tell you, well, I put money in Detroit and I got this charity going on, man. Listen, the charity that the scripture is talking about is pushing this word and self-sacrifice to push this word, to dedicate your life, right, to pushing this word that truly will heal the souls of the elect out of the nation of Israel. That's the charity that the scripture was talking about, all right? Neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them, all right? So you have to understand that this is what Jake is doing. Now, <clears throat> let me go down to um, verse twenty-eight. It says, "In the as a matter of fact, let me read, let me read this in the NLT right quick." I don't think I've done that before. Um, this is Isaiah one to twenty-three. Your leaders are rebels, all right? And and of course, you you, you would say, "Why well, is he?" Well, he's one of the richest. Negro, so yeah, he's he's an upper middle class. He's a millionaire, right? He's been a millionaire for a long time. You know, there's Negroes out there like that, man. They make money. You just don't hear about them because um, the group of apes in our nation, and I call them apes because they act like apes, right? It's all about just, you know, being in an animalistic mindset. The the group that's actually highly glorified is the street Negroes, right? The the, the the crash dummies that you see in the streets, game banging dudes, artists as far as entertainers, rappers, um, you know, um basketball players, you know, those guys, those are the ones that are that are basically glorified in um the so called community. But what you would realize is that um the black men, the so-called black men, beginning with the tribe of Judah, that are actually making money are dudes like him. And there's a, there's a lot of them, right? It's a lot of them, upper middle to upper middle class Negroes that are quietly making good money, not giving a fuck about their people, which in, in, a, in some sense you can kind of see because they're not trying to be linked in 
with the super grimy apes in in in, in the ghettos and the slums. But they themselves are nothing but uppity apes. That's all it is. And the reason why I'm using the word ape, I'm talking about the actions, the mentality, because. The reality is, if you don't have, as scripture says, a man that wandereth out of a way of understanding, it will remain in the congregation of the dead. And the scripture said that every man in his best is vanity like a beast. Without this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you're comparable to a beast in the eyes of Yahweh Hashem El Shah. Okay, just because you can make a sound out of your mouth, right? But if that sound doesn't make proper sense according to Yahweh Hashem El Shah, you just sound like. The way a dog, uh, animal sounds when he speaks or barks to you. All right. <clears throat> Isaiah 1 to 23. Your leaders are rebels. The companions are thieves. All of them love bribes and demand payoffs. But they refuse to defend the cause of orphans or fight for the rights of widows. Right. You sitting there talking about you rich, but your people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You're destroyed for lack of knowledge. You, you know, our people have become... Extreme degenerates beginning with Judah on down, but you okay because you rich and you pour a little bit a little bit of money into the city of Detroit. The city of Detroit belongs to the Rothschilds, just like the whole United States belongs to Rothschilds Inc. All right, but you don't know that, right? You're just talking your shit. Now let's go down to twenty eight. But rebels and sinners will be completely destroyed. And those who desert the Lord will be consumed. All right. The two thirds are basically deserters and they, they're going to be consumed. You will be ashamed of your idol worship, meaning you worship money. Right. Because that's what that's what this this that's what this dude is. Anton Daniels. Right. You worship money. Well, this is what the scripture said. That's why I've been stay in your effing lane, man. Stay in your effort. If you don't understand, that's why I sometimes say a wise man, if you you know you consider wise, if you don't know anything and you're foolish in a particular thing, you consider wise if you shut the F up. Just stay in your lane and man building and all that. And you cross over with the big boys and the spirit and power you how by Shemel Shah, you're gonna get something that you ain't ready for, man. But again, we living in the last days. The Lord at this point is going to make moves on everybody, whether it be for good or evil. He's going to make moves on everybody, beginning with the nation of Israel. All right. Verse 28. But the rebels and sinners will be completely destroyed and those who desert the Lord will be consumed. You will be ashamed of your idol worship in groves of sacred oaks. You will blush because you worship in gardens dedicated to idols. You will be. Like a great tree with withered leaves, like a garden without water. But right? when all hell breaks loose, man, it's going to be bad for these dudes. It's going to be bad for these dudes, man. They're going to be brought low right along with the, the rest of the apes and the ghettos and the slums that they always look down upon and laugh at. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to be, you're going to be, but all, I mean, the, from the upper the Negro to the gang banging Negro, you're all going to be throwing in concentration camps together, right? You're all going to get lynched, you know, with your um, uh, 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 guillotined, with your organs harvested. These things are going to happen to you. You're going to get, you know, it, it's just the reality of it. We're just telling you what the scripture is saying. Now, the elect of Yahweh by Hashem are going to be protected. All right. That's why we out there. Who the hell is going to be out there chasing money when he knows death is right around the corner? Okay. Death and destruction and pain and chaos is right around the corner. Why the hell would you want to chase money when you know this money, this market is getting ready to collapse? When you know that the MOTB, the mark of the beast, is going to be introduced, the microchip. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 31. The strongest among you would disappear like straw. See, the strongest, the richest, the big names in the nation of Israel. You're going to be like, man, what the hell happened to LeBron James and them? All these big names. A lot of them dudes, man, they're going to die, man. You Listen, they're going to either, if you see them, you're going to see them in camps. You might run into them in the woods, right, looking all rugged and raggedy, raggedy and shit. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, hey, man, you, hey, man, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey bro, it, it, it's going to be the most high is going to humble this place, man. Every inhabitant of Babylon will be humbled, man. 
You're going to see dudes that were called superstars and women that were called so-called superstars. You're going to see them in the woods, in the concentration camps. You're going to see them in all different places. You're going to be like, wow, the Lord has truly done work on this place. All right? Because this place, it's not just going to go out quickly. Because this place, before it gets destroyed, the people in this land that have boasted that have been wicked and degenerate, beginning with the Israelites, they have to sit and realize that this is indeed the Most High who is slowly killing them for their rebellious acts that they've done over and over and over. All right? The strongest among you will disappear like straw. Their evil deeds will be the spark that sets, sets it on fire. They and their evil works will burn up together. And no one will be able to put out the fire. All right. So that's what we're dealing with, man. All right. So let's go to Amos chapter 6 and 8. It says, The Lord, Yahweh Hashem El Shah, has sworn by himself, saith the Lord, power of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob. What's the excellency of Jacob? It's the uppity Negroes. You well-to-do Negroes like Anton Daniels that are out here calling yourselves rich and winning. He's not the only one. There's many of them out there seeing it. Right, some of them talk their shit, like Charleston White, he's another one talking his shit from time to time. He's gonna get dealt with, right? So all the excellence, the so called excellency of Jacob, right? The Israelites that are doing well in Babylon and, and, and wanna join in and be one, you know, hand in hand with the devil, you know, and, and spread so called spread the wealth. The Lord power of hosts. It says, Save the Lord. The power of hosts. I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces. Your big ass house. Some of these Jakes got $25 million homes, $10 million homes, $37 million homes. Your people are getting destroyed. Your people are getting destroyed, man. And you are living amongst Edomites in a $37 million house. I'm sorry, man. I, listen, that... If you under like, if you righteous, you'll know why Moses just couldn't do it, right? Moses could not do it, but you got these Israelites that are able to do that. They'll live amongst you know. That's why the scripture said the princes are companion with the thieves, living around Edomites in thirty, forty million dollar homes, and you see every day you drive past your people are absolutely destroyed. All right, <clears throat> so it says. I abhor the excellency of Jacob and I hate his palaces. Therefore, will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. All right. So now next precept. Let's go to uh, Psalms 49 and 6. It says, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor Give to the mo to the power a ransom for him. All right, so you can't give a ransom for his sins. Um, Yahushai was the ransom for, ransom for the sins of the elect. Anton Daniel, just like all of us, has security, uh, social security. He pays taxes. He has a birth certificate. Basically, he's a slave. All right, he's just a wealthier slave. All right, but that's all he is. And he can't deliver himself. Now, he can get a passport and fly, but that passport is a paperwork that allows, he's allowed to move around the earth. A, a, a prince of the power, Israelite from the tribe of Judah, Anton Daniel, he's allowed, he would be allowed and he would be tracked by all these different governments. He would be a, under a tracking system to know where he's at at all times. So you're not going to be freed until Yahushua, our Lord and Savior, comes back and delivers us. And when Yahushua is around and we are ruling, we're not going to be asking for permission to go from one land to another. All right? We're not going to need no damn passport. Okay? These are some of the things that are going to change soon, though. Maybe we just got to be uh, patient. Now, uh, let me conclude with this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 15, it says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the things given of many redound to the glory of the Most High. For which cause we faint not, but 
though our outward man perish, you right, we perish, we're poor, right? we, we are financially poor, all right, that's just the reality, now, we're not destitute, we not, meaning the men of the Lord are not homeless, right, we're not destitute, we're not picking up food out the trash can, why, because we have a family, we have a spiritual family and a brotherhood, we take care of each other, all right, but we do, when, when you're talking about what what is a poor person, how much does a poor person make, how much does a poor person live the lifestyle of a poor in the United States? We are poor. That's just the reality of it. And we accept that. We accept that. Now, do we like it? Nobody likes to be poor. But we accept it because we understand that being rich in spirit in, in the world to come and the riches that's coming in the world to come. All right? And knowing that we are living in the last chapters of the United States or also known as the virgin daughter of Babylon, knowing that we are a couple months away from total chaos and, uh, and all hell breaking loose, that gives us pleasure, all right? We okay with that. Call us poor, all right? Call us poor. <clears throat> it says, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, right, the so-called riches of this world, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, all right, meaning a Porsche, a, 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 a what's the fucking Tesla, a Lamborghini Aventador, you know, what's, the, what's that thing that everybody talking about now? G-Wagon, because that's the newest thing, one of the, one of the things that everybody kind of talking about, G-Wagon. Man, you ain't going to be thinking about no G-Wagon when you're in a concentration camp sleeping in a cement with a barrel, a big, big gun at your face, right? At your face and hearing noise and screams of people getting absolutely raped and assaulted and, and murdered. You ain't going to worry about none of that shit, man. You're just going to be out here calling and hoping that the Heavenly Father protects you and delivers you, all right? This is why the men of the Lord are out there in the highways and the edges, Pushing his word, regardless of the mockery that we get from our own people. While we look not at the things which are seen, which look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, so we fight for eternal glory. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, that's basically it, man. When I look at Anton, Anton Daniel, like I said, he should have just. Kept to his content. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's it's the last days, man. Everybody gotta get it. Everybody's gonna get it. And you know, at some point you're gonna run it run into this. You either gonna ignore it or you you're gonna dive into it. If you're a two-third, you're gonna be condemned and just await for your destruction. If you're a whole, if you're an elect, you know, you're gonna latch on to this word to a spin and probably hold by Shemel Shah, and you you're gonna commence the journey. Of righteousness and faith. All right. So with that, I'm gonna say, "Kah halam la yahawa ba shem yahusha ba shem wachakudash." Giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom. And salutation, all you sincere akim across the four winds, pushing his truth with sincerity of heart. Because I'm a guy from a DC camp. Shalom.